Hey, I'm Pete. And I'm Randy. We're back again. We're from Moab Adventure Condo, and we're going to tell you about our second and third day of our overlanding trip in Moab. And so where where all did we go on our trip here, Randy? Well, after, after we made it through Poison Spider. Poison Spider, that was in video one, and that was yeah, a was tough part, part one. Yeah. That was a tough trail. Yeah, that one had me stressed out. Yeah, so this one was, we switched gears, and we're in an open wash, the de, debunking wash, debunky wash. The bunk, I ain't from around here. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but anyhow, it was up near um, Delano Tunnel. Delenbach, yeah. Delenbach Tunnel. But the cool thing about this wash was, I thought it was just a wash, and then we came up on this old this old camp. Camp. I don't know what it was. What the, I don't know if it was a um, miners' camp or a horse cow cattle camp. It had a little corral back beside one side of it, and then it had like a dugout built with big timbers. Yeah, like railroad ties yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, and that was still intact. The other side had collapsed. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. One side had collapsed, and then across the, on the other side of the road was some kind of structure that had. Some fencing around it, like they might have kept their horses pinned up behind them or something. Yeah, but the cool yeah. thing about this, after the first day being so hard, yeah, you could really get on it and just sling some sand yeah, you down can, in this you trail. Yeah, you can go out there and, and like, I, you know, what we buy these machines for is to ride them, have some fun. Uh, you can pick up a little speed on them and, and really feel them. Yeah. So this is the um, tunnel right here. And this is, we've found several tunnels in the Moab area. This one was pretty cool. Um it was more open. Yeah, it was a it was a bigger a bigger tunnel. Not as long as like Tusha Tunnel that we've been to before. Uh not and not as, not as, as that, tight but, as yeah. the um, I didn't hit my head on anything. What else. the dripping spring tunnel? Is that yeah. what that was called over on um going out the um chicken corners? Yep. Yeah. But it's still a neat tunnel and then there's a real pretty canyon over to the other side of yeah, it. Yeah, really cool canyon over there, and then uh, it dropped off. But uh, when you come out of the tunnel back to the left, it was like it was enclosed by, by rock walls. Like, you you know, back in the day, Indians could have had a whole little village set up in there. Yeah. But, yeah, you can see the big rock in the distance. I don't know what Lee was doing here. He, you guys, y'all are too adventuresome sometimes. But yeah, I think y'all were trying to go around and see if you could yeah, find we, a way We thought out the trail way. went around, but evidently it did not. Yeah, what, then, what is this? What do you call this? Uh, Lee called it the snail, the snail technique. The snail technique. Yeah, I call it the, you almost messed up. <laughs> yeah, the worst part was my camera bag. I couldn't, it kept dragging the ground and getting in my way, but I made it. Yeah, so it was I, all I good. I went the other way. Well, sometimes you're smarter than me. Not all the time, but sometimes. <clears throat> this right here is called the Needles, and we're coming up at the start of the Crystal Geyser Trail. And so there's these big, giant rocks. They're called the Needles. It's a pretty cool area. Um, the coolest thing about this area was, well, I'm not going to mention it, because you didn't really... I didn't see. I think I... They, it, Supposedly, they saw a sunbather. I didn't see a sunbather, but well, you know, you're knows? getting older, and maybe I think the sun, whatever. Y'all had heat strokes. Sun was in your eyes or something. It might know. have been a mirage. But... It may have been a mirage. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the trail. Um, I really like this trail. I like how it was up on the um, the top. You're oh, you're in a big open area, but you're yep. up against the cliff. And you're kind of weaving in and out weaving of all these around everything, yeah. all these big giant boulders, and you got big vistas and the views. I mean, I, I, this is what I I like it when you're out, you're up on top of a ridge, and you have the views you see forever. I mean, we're from Georgia, so we come out here, you know, we we don't have these views where you can see for miles and miles and miles. I think that's what I'm in awe of when I come out here so much. You got a, a 500 to 800 foot rock wall on one side and a 500 to 800 foot drop off on the other side and just miles of horizon in the sky. Yep, that's definitely what you had right here. 
and you know this trail is pretty easy so you just could kind of you could kind of just cruise through these big yep. boulders yeah cruise through there i didn't have to worry about falling over no no flip overs no on flip this overs one. after the after the golden crack well later in the day when we got down in 10 mile wash yeah we got a little we had a few little technical things to do down in there just because we we're pushing the boundaries going to the river yeah i think a lot of people turn around before they go as far as we so. did yeah. <clears throat> and there was still some some fun stuff uh you know some little ledges to climb up and things like that a few little technical things that still kept the, the trail interesting you know yep so so we started on poison spider we went through that area the poison spider mesa we came back down to the the gas station and got gas right there at utah 313 that goes to canyonlands yep. then we rode up there and then we went through that wash and now we're in 10 mile 10 mile wash 10 mile there. wash i think that is probably one of most my most favorite it's, areas it's in a, all of moab it's an awesome area it don't it, it don't have the you're not up on top of the plateaus and you don't have the views but you're down in this this huge valley i mean this and the the cottonwood trees are down there and then we were in october so i mean they were they were just changing they were golden the last uh, week of october is the time that you want to be on yeah. this trail this trail and you'll get all of these golden cottonwood trees it's beautiful i mean when you go to moab you don't really think about seeing trees yeah, you don't think about riding through the through the the woods we call them woods back home but you know the woods the forest are, are just these crops of trees down through there and still it's uh the weather's in october late october still perfect to me i mean it we've been out we've cold. been out twice and it's been perfect yeah. each time yeah in october yeah yeah and so that's where we got the idea to do the overlanding was that, our previous right. trip yes. to moab at the end of october the weather was perfect and you know, down in 10 Mile Wash, there's a bunch of big sandbars, so there's plenty of yeah. camping sites. Oh, yeah, camps. I mean, there's there's plenty of camping sites along, uh, you know, little creeks and, and uh, just awesome. I mean, you, you find a spot and there's nothing out there, but you, we had a campfire, you know, and, and a sky full of stars. So and, this is where we ended up camping right here were all these alcoves. Or I think there were five of them, and it, there was a big sandbar, so we were able to um, camp right there, and we just camped under the stars. The night yeah. before, we actually camped in an alcove. On this one, here you go, you can see our, um, we just laid the tent, I mean, the sleeping bags yeah, right out. Out on the ground. On the ground. And around the fire. That's where we slept at. It was... It was perfect. Oh yeah, it was it was awesome. And then we got up in the morning. We took my uncle exploring. He'd never been to Utah before, so he thought all this stuff was just the greatest thing he'd yeah. ever seen. Yep. All these alcoves. You know, I wonder if back in the day maybe there was some Indian ruins in those alcoves. I've I seen mean, a sure few of the signs. Them, yeah, I'm sure they used them for something. I mean. There was Look, smoke yeah, on the um, smoke roofs. Smoke on, on the roofs, yeah, black from the smoke. Uh, or, or even a cowboy pushing his herd in there in that little canyon, you know, to, to get out of a storm and stayed up there in, in that cave and watched them. Really, you know, the coolest thing about 10 Mile was we found it by mistake. Yeah, yeah. We were actually headed towards... Was it Crystal Geyser? Crystal Geyser. And uh, Dripping uh, Springs. We were at Dripping Springs, and you were trying to find the spring. Yeah. And I walked the wrong way. He walked. Yeah, you walked the wrong way. Yeah. So I got on the side by side, and I went to go pick you up, and then the trail just kept the going. The trail just kept going. We followed it. So I mean, we we found all this by accident. I mean, even with the the GPSs and the things we had, it said ten mile wash, but there was no trail. Mark. There was no trail saying it was there, and, and no, nothing to tell you the the awesome things you could see down in there. And, and that's kind of what we come out here to do is just explore and find things by accident that uh, you know that, that people haven't told us about. We just try and go to areas and that we've never been to and ride and 
Uh, well, a lot of times people come to Moab and they see these famous trails that the big the giant things with 35 inch tires, 40 inch tires try to go up. And that's what they want to do. They want to yeah. come out here and they end up destroying their, they drive all the way across the country. They destroy their machine. I don't understand it. When there's stuff like yeah. this, there's dozens of trails like this all over Moab. You can go out, you can have a great time and yeah, you're not really and, damaging your equipment. So this is kind of the point of no return. Most people do not go down off this ledge right here. But we went down yeah. and there's a lot less use to the yeah, trail. Yeah, I don't think very many people go past that point. You can see the trail is getting narrower and narrower. It's a lot less defined. Yeah. The, the brush gets thicker on the trail. Yeah, if you had a 72 or 74 inch machine it would definitely be it'd be tight it'd be scraping on your sides but yeah we just kept going and it just kept getting more and more narrow we kept thinking any point we were going to, have to turn around yeah, it was going to turn around i could see on the gps we were getting closer and closer to the to river, the river. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't i didn't think we were going to make it but um yeah, we just kept going. And what, we were 800, 800, 1,000 feet down in the canyon at this point? Yeah, I think it was 800 feet. So right here, the rocks in the distance is actually the other side of the Green River. So we're almost to it. And, you know, we came back here another time, and the water was all backed up yep. in here, and you couldn't get down here. So this was kind of a special trip yep. to get here. And then... So from here on, we're kind of going to let you get our impressions of what it was like when we got there. So that's it. That's it. So here it is. We made it to the Green River. We were in no way planning to come out here. But one little turn, we were looking for dripping springs and Randy I was being nice and went to go pick them up and then we just kept following the trail and I, we've been going for 15 miles or more and finally we've made it out here to the green river randy what do you think about what we just did i mean this is something that out here that two big dummies out here by ourselves could have got lost from atlanta but well, you know hey we uh you know, you take a trail, you ride it, you explore, you get out here and you, and you find a spot like this that, I mean, who knows when the last person was here. Not very many people have been here. Yeah. There's a few dirt bike tracks and that's about it. It's awesome though.